Today, we are going to build an amortization schedule in Power Apps. Traditionally, this has been built in tabular data sources like Excel and Co. But there was a request in the Power App community schedule by one of the subscribers, Ramo, uh, who asked how to do the amortization schedule in Power Apps right in power apps instead of building it in another data source like excel so this is it we are going to build this amortization schedule in power apps but before then what is an amortization schedule institute defines an amortization schedule as a schedule of table or a table that provides details of periodic payments of a particular loan giving the principal the total payment as well as the interest and then the remaining balance over a period of time so typically in excel we have an example like this we have um, the month column that is giving you the number of period in which the loan will be repaid the opening balance meaning the person took a loan of thousand ghana the person is paying a periodic payment of 45 $47. With the 47 there is an interest of 10% and a principal of 37 It gives you the closing balance. Then the closing balance is brought to the second period and then it continues on and on and on until the loan repayment goes to zero. So this is what is normally built in SL and it is easier in SL, but we are going to look at how to build it in Parallels. Thank you. Okay, so in this post, we saw, we, we have seen that there is a request for loan amortization by Ramo, and uh, there is not a solution to this. There was another request by Dan Wong also requesting the same amortization schedule. So definitely there is the need to be able to do your own amortization schedule instead of instead of doing it in another data source like Excel. So with this, let's go straight to Power Apps and see how we are going to build the amortization schedule. Thank you. Okay, so before we proceed on how I built this schedule, let's look at it. So typically a loan has um, an amount. So let's enter the 10,000 Ghana CDs. The number of years that the loan will be paid. So let's say I've taken this loan for five years and there's an interest of 5%. Then number of compounding, you look at the period or the frequency in which the loan will be compounded or the interest rate will be calculated so typically i will pick it will be compounded on a monthly basis then you hit so the component of amortization and uh, we can look at the formula is this i wouldn't bother you too much about it but we have the principal we have the rate and then we have the number of compounding that is basically the formula for the amortization. Now we have a different techniques also of also generating, and that is exactly what we have done and what is why we are going to learn from now. So before then we have test boxes that have inserted. The first test box takes the amount, that would be the loan amount. I have the number of years, then I have the interest rate, and then I also have the frequency of compounding or the type of compounding. Are you compounding it by monthly, by yearly, by weekly, based on your the type of loan and then maybe the contracts you have? Now, with this drop down. In the invisible, I created a table, compounding period table. Now I have the period of yearly, 
monthly, semi annual, daily. Then correspondingly, I have the compounding number. So I have one for year, I have 12 for month. Of course, you can change this to suit your request. So in the number of period, I am multiplying the variable that I pick from the drop down with the number of years on the unchanged property of the drop down whatever is picked from the drop down i am setting the compounding number and pushing the number into this variable and it is this variable that i'm multiplying by the number of years so that is how it is now let's go back to the code when i look at the button that generate the code i have a various set of codes or formulas in the first row i'm creating an update contest now an update contest is a way of creating variables uh, of reusing various input that have been entered in these test boxes i have a full video on variables which gives the update contest and address into more details i'll put the description below so in the first i'm creating a var rate that is a rate that picks from the rate test box the rate test box and i'm dividing it by the var compound number or when we look at the amortization this is exactly this the r divided by n that is the rate divided by the number of compounding period. I also have the amount, var amount, then var number of period, and the number of period is this test box. So that finishes the first set of code for the generation. On the second line, I'm creating a collection called core schedule, and I'm adding various columns. The first column that I'm adding called value is about the number of rows the sequencing and i'm using the sequence formula and we look at the sequence formula the sequence syntax the first on the syntax is about the record that is the number of rows in our case because we have 60 and i'm making it dynamic so whatever is entered here will be in this variable which is picked from the variable that is created by the ib contest so in this case it is 60 then i am starting with one so one up to 60 and the increment is one so one two three with the sequencing if you put two here and it means that the starting will be two and if you put five here it will be two and then the next number will be two plus five which will be seven then plus five plus five until the total number that you have you want on the row is fully generated so we are having 60 which is entered in the test box and then we are starting with one incrementing by one so one two three four up to 60. now the next column that i am creating or i'm adding to this uh, collection is monthly payments with the monthly payments Based on the amortization schedule, I am multiplying the amount that is entered in the test box by the rate. And this is the formula for the rate. Then the rest of it follows. You have the rate plus one, raised the power number of period, one plus rate, divided by one plus rate, raised the power number of period minus one. Of course, derived from the amortization formula that I have shown earlier here. Now, when we look at the second rule, I have a closing balance. Now, the closing balance, I also have the amount with the various code that is derived from the amortization formula. So, by now, we have two columns in the collection set of three columns the sequencing the monthly payment and the closing balance now 
the trick here in the writing the amortization column is to be able to derive at least two columns from the amortization formula so in my case i'm doing the monthly payment and i'm also doing the closing balance after that i'm creating another collection abs from the collection i've already created the core score now the purpose of this collection is to be able to help me use it in a lookup that follows now i have another collection which is the main amortization schedule that we are going to use in the gallery so core amortization schedule i am add i'm taking it from the core schedule and i'm adding interest now with the interest rate with the interest rate what i'm doing is that on the first row i am having an if formula when we look at the interest row, this is the interest. Now, whatever is in the opening balance, it will be multiplied by the rate so that we get the interest. Of course, based on the number of compounding, not straightforward by the number of years, but based on the number of compounding. So, in the first, if the core schedule value, if the first column is equal to 1, then I am multiplying the amount with the var rate. And remember, the var rate is not just the rate, but it's the rate divided by the compounding number. Now, if it is not equal to 1, then I am multiplying the closing balance that has been brought forward here by the var rate. So on the first row, we have the var rate times the first figure, which is the 10,000. But on the second, we have the var rate times the closing balance, which will be an open balance for the second period. Okay, so when we look at the code again, we have if call schedule, value in the call schedule, that is the row is equals to 1, just use the first amount. However, if it is 1, if it is the 1 plus the first row, then we are going to do a lookup, lookup into ABS, the value plus one is equal to score schedule value. Bring the closing balance. Now, when we get the closing balance, then multiply the closing balance by the value rate, and which is the value rate, I will continue to say that is the rate divided by the number of components. So that gives us a third column, which is the interest rate. So we now have the value column or the first row containing the serial numbers. We have the monthly payment column. We have the closing balance column. Then we also have the interest rate column. So from here, we insert, we insert a gallery. Now on the gallery, we have various label items inserted into it. The first one, we have this item dot value. Which give which get the number of rows one to sixty. We have the closing balance with this item dot closing balance. We also have the principal, and the principal is the monthly payment minus the interest. Then we have the interest, which is this item dot interest, the monthly column, this item dot monthly column. Then we have the opening balance and the opening balance for the first row will be the uh, the amount that is entered in the test box as the loan amount and then the second line will be the closing for the first period which will be the opening for the second so that will be this item dot closing balance plus this item that monthly payment minus the interest that gives you the opening balance so this is how to build amortization schedule in power apps and of course it is a response to various requests that have been done in the power community